Listen, scripters, we need to stop misusing Wait for Child. If you're a seasoned Roblox developer, you've likely come across the Wait for Child function in the dev forum, scripts from free models, or you've probably used it yourself. You've heard of the scary problems of replication and how the client needs to wait for stuff to load in before it can start accessing it. Well, let me tell you that you are likely using Wait for Child much more often than you need to. As an example, this is an old script I wrote a while back when I didn't really know how to use Wait for Child. And if your code looks something similar to this, then I'm sorry to break it to you, but you've probably got a bad case of Wait for Child-itis. Frankly, this type of chained Wait for Child is extremely unnecessary in your scripts. And there's a much simpler way of indexing for these things without having to use the Wait for Child function. I mean, I was using Wait for Child on server scripts, which is a big no-no. You should almost never need to use Wait for Child on a server script, let alone using it like this on a local script. So to get a good feeling of how to use Wait for Child, we need to understand what replication is. And replication is simply the process of content on the server being replicated or copied to a player in our game. That could be something like a new part the server created, or a property on some object the server altered. Whatever the case may be, the server needs to send that information to the clients in the game so they can see it on their copy of the game. What do I mean by their copy of the game? Well, whenever a player joins a Roblox game, they download a copy of the game on their system, meaning it's separate from the server's copy. Whenever the server makes changes to the game, it tells all the players to do the same thing on their copies too. This is why if you try to make changes to the game through a local script, it won't be visible to the server or any other players in the game. As an example, here I am on a one player server. This is my client side and over here is my server. And let's say the server wanted to create a new part in the game. So let's just go ahead and insert a part and I'll make sure to anchor that part. And if we go ahead and take a look on the client, as you can see, we have that part in our game as well. And that's because the server has told all the players in the game, hey, I've added a new part please add this part into your copy of the game as well. So that means if the server decides to move around this part or adjust the size of the part, it's going to tell the clients to do the same thing on their copy of the game as well. And we can observe this if we head to the view tab and we open up the networking panel and we go ahead and pay attention to the overall incoming data. When I start moving this part around, you should see that the overall incoming data has increased and that's because the server is sending us information of where to update the position for this part. Or if I need to resize the part, the server is also going to tell me how to resize the part, what direction, that kind of stuff. And because this client is on their own copy of the game, if I were to select this part and I try to move it around here on the client side, as you can see the server doesn't see anything happening. This is because I'm manipulating the part on my copy of the game. And since we don't have permission to replicate stuff happening on the client's copy to the server's copy, as you can see, the server doesn't see that change happening. But once the server starts making changes, it updates to that particular player. Now the server is able to grant us the ability to replicate specific things like the position and rotation of this particular part if I have it unanchored. So on the server, I'm going to make sure I unanchor this part, which now means there's going to be physics acting upon this part. And because the server wants to try and conserve as much resources as possible, it's going to basically offshore the duty of calculating the physics for this part to the closest player, which would be my player one right here. Now that means I should automatically have network ownership over this unanchored part. And if I start moving it on the client, as you can see, the server is also able to observe that change because I have network ownership. I'm calculating the physics and I'm able to manipulate the position and I'm also able to manipulate the rotation of the part. Okay, so we kind of have a basic idea of how replication works. Now, how does this relate to local scripts? Well, the containers that execute local scripts like starter player, the starter pack, the starter GUI, all those containers only execute the local scripts inside of them until the game.loaded event fires. That event will fire after all of the objects in the server's copy of the game replicates to the player when our player joins the game. This means that there is absolutely no point to wait for assets to replicate that you know will be in your game. For example, if you had a part inside of replicated storage 
and that part was there when you go and you publish and you save your game, that part's going to be there when the player joins the game, and any local scripts inside of those local script containers, when they execute, they're going to be able to access this part without having to wait for it to replicate, because it's already going to be in replicated storage. So there's no need to use wait for child when indexing, for example, replicated storage to grab this particular part. The only exception to this is going to be any models and parts in the workspace if you have streaming enabled. I'm not going to dive into streaming enabled if you don't know what that is, but it basically dynamically streams content in the workspace to our player when they get close to it. This means you will have to yield or wait for stuff in the workspace if you have streaming enabled, but if you don't, let's say it's disabled, then you don't even have to wait for anything in the workspace. The only stuff you're going to have to wait for are things that are created during runtime. Let's say the server clones a big model from server storage to the workspace and the client needs to grab stuff inside that model. Well, the client's going to have to wait for that stuff to replicate. So anything created during runtime from the server, you must wait for. And you must wait for any models or parts in the workspace if you have streaming enabled. Otherwise, there is absolutely no reason for you to be using the wait for child function. As an example, let's go ahead and create a screen GUI in the starter GUI. I'm just going to put some random crap in here like a frame. Let's put a text label in that frame. Let's put, let's say, a scrolling frame here. We'll put another text label. And let's say I had a local script inside of my screen GUI, and I needed to refer to some of the stuff in here. Commonly, what I'll see happen is... They'll make a reference to the GUI, which is typically equal to script.parent because our local script is a child of the screen GUI. And then if they want to make a variable for something like, let's say this frame right here, I'll see people do something like GUI wait for child frame. There's absolutely no reason to do this at all. You can simply just directly index for the frame. You don't have to use wait for child. And that's because how GUIs are replicated to the client. When your player joins the game, all the stuff in the starter GUI is already going to be loaded. All that has to happen is the GUI needs to be cloned from the starter GUI into the player's player GUI folder. So for example, if I go and play test my game, the screen GUI, which is inside of my starter GUI, has been copied into my player's player GUI folder. You can see it right here. But once it's cloned inside of here, we don't need to wait for any of the descendants of the screen GUI. Especially considering the fact that this local script is inside of the screen GUI, you don't need to wait for this stuff to replicate. You don't need to use wait for child. You can simply refer to the frame. If you need to grab like text label inside of that frame, you could just do frame.textlabel. There's no need to be using wait for child here because it's already going to be there. You can safely and directly index for that text label. Now another exception where you will need to use wait for child is if you have a local script inside of replicated first. Replicated first, as the name suggests, is going to store all the stuff that should replicate first to the player. So if you have a local script in there and if you try to access any instance outside of replicated first, you're going to have to use wait for child. So for example, let's put a local script in there. And we're going to put a part in replicated first as well. Now, thankfully, this local script is not going to execute until everything inside of replicated first has been loaded. So that means it's safe for me to get replicated first, so script.parent, and then I can easily make a variable for that particular part. So replicated first, and then I can directly index for that part. I don't need to use wait for child. That's unnecessary. I don't need to use it. Now, let's say that this script was going to access something outside of replicated first. Well, since this script is going to execute before the game.loaded event fires, so if you check the game.loaded, it says fires on the client when the game finishes loading for the first time. What we can do is we can print if the game is loaded, and this is going to print false. And then let's go ahead and try to store in a variable the spawn plate that's in our workspace. So we'll call this spawn, and that's going to be equal to workspace. And instead of using wait for child, we're going to directly index for the spawn location. And we're going to get an error here because the spawn location does not exist in the workspace yet. And that's because the game hasn't loaded. So let's go ahead and actually move this print statement after our variable declaration. And let's go ahead and run the game and let's go ahead and see what happens. 
So if you look in the console there, we got an error. Spawn location is not a valid member of workspace, and that's because that local script inside of Replicator first executed before the game loaded event fired. And because it errored, actually we weren't able to get to that print statement, so that was kind of silly for me to put after the fact. So let's just put it before so I can prove to you that the game is not loaded. So you can see it printed false because the game was not loaded yet, and then we got our error because we tried to directly index for something that has not been loaded. This is where we can use wait for child and wait for that spawn location. That way we don't encounter that particular error. If we take a look, it printed false, but this time we didn't get our error, which is beautiful because what wait for child does, it's going to wait for that instance, the particular instance we're looking for. It's gonna wait for that to replicate. And then once it does, it's going to store that inside of our variable. So to recap, the only time you need to use wait for child is if you're going to be accessing an instance from a local script that's in replicated first, or if you need to access an instance that is going to be present during the runtime of your game. So like the server cloning a model into the workspace or the server creating a part. And if the client is listening for when that part gets added, it's going to have to wait for that part or it's going to have to wait for any descendants of a particular model or a part when it's being created during runtime. Otherwise, stuff that already exists in the game like my spawn location, my base plate, my part in replicated storage. If I had a local script in starter player scripts, I could easily store variables for all of those different things, like the part in replicated storage, I'll call it, this will be equal to game dot replicated storage, and I don't need to use wait for child, I can directly index for my part. I can do the same thing for the spawn location in the workspace, so spawn location, that's going to be equal to workspace dot spawn location. No need to use wait for child, and that's because I have streaming enabled set to false. And to prove to you that this script is only going to execute once the game has loaded, let's go ahead and print game is loaded into the console. Okay, it printed false and replicated first, but as you can see, the other local script that was in our starter player scripts printed true. So that script only executes after the game loads. So if you've ever seen people do something like if not game is loaded, or I think it's the function is loaded, then game.loaded wait or something like that. If you've ever seen this at the top of local scripts, especially local scripts that are in something like starter player scripts or starter GUI or whatever, just know that's absolutely stupid. This local script is going to execute once the game has been loaded. So there's no need to check if the game's been loaded, you know? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate why it's important that we need to use wait for child on models or parts that are replicated. Let's say we clone a model from server storage and we place it inside of the workspace. And let's say that model has something inside of it that the client wants to grab. Well, it's very important for us to use wait for child when trying to access any of the descendants of a model or a part because there's no guarantee that those particular things have been replicated. So for example, with this giant model, there's tons and tons of parts in here. I all gave them just different random names, random colors, and I set them randomly about. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this model inside of our server storage. And I have a server script that's going to wait 10 seconds to give our player some time to load. And then it's going to clone that special model and place it inside of our workspace. Then afterwards, I have this local script inside of starter player scripts, and it's going to be listening for when a child is added to the workspace. So when a child is added, it's going to print child has been added. We're going to check to see if that child is our special model. And if it is, then we're like, ooh, there's something in there we want to grab. So I'm going to be directly indexing that model for a particular part in there that has this name. And inside of those parts, there's a decal and a child of that decal, there is a number of value. So I wanna grab that and store it in this variable. Now, because we're not using wait for child here, and instead we're directly indexing for these things, we're going to run into a problem. So if I were to go and play my game, and we wait 10 seconds, we should see an error appear inside of our console. So a child was added because that was our character model. And then afterwards, there we go. The model got added into our workspace. It says, ooh, we found the special model. But unfortunately, that part we were indexing for is not a valid member of our model. 
and that's because it was not yet replicated to us on the client. But that part is indeed a part of our model. So if I search through my workspace for 0.32834665, you can see there's my part right there, it matches the name perfectly. But because we directly indexed our model and we didn't use wait for child, we didn't give this part an opportunity to replicate to us here on the player's copy of the game. Anything that is created during the runtime, so if a child is added to the workspace from let's say server storage or whatever the case may be and there's stuff in it that we want to access, it's very important that we use wait for child. So let's replace this with wait for child. We're going to wait for that particular part and then we're going to wait for the decal that's inside of it. And then we're going to wait for the number value that is inside of our decal. And now we shouldn't have an issue grabbing that number value and printing out the value stored inside of there into the console. And any second now it should get added. There we go, special model found. And as you can see, we didn't get an error this time, but the value that was stored in that number value instance, which is zero, got printed into our console. And that's because we used wait for child on this particular model that was created during the runtime of our game. All right, let's go through a quick recap of what we just learned. When trying to index for objects in our game, if our local script is inside of one of the local script containers, you do not need to use wait for child. The exceptions to this are going to be models and parts in the workspace if streaming is enabled, and if you are trying to access any objects from a local script that is inside of replicated first. We also need to use wait for child when trying to grab any objects created and replicated during the runtime of our game. However, we don't need to use wait for child when we're grabbing stuff from, for example, replicated storage or the sound service after the game.loaded event has fired because those instances will be ready for us to access. So that is wait for child in a nutshell. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of when and when not to use wait for child. Thanks for watching.